Hello friends, this is Growl. Welcome to Waffle Cat Weekly number, let's call it 19. We missed a week, unfortunately. I had the bright idea of trying to do the Waffle Cat Weekly live on stream because it was right before the Dragon Flight announcement. And I got DMCA struck on the song at the very beginning and I lost the first five minutes. So I decided not to upload that if you were wondering where that went. Uh, we have a good one today though. So I haven't been doing raid that much over the last week just because i think i have all the gear that i want from the raid from the most part there's a few pieces here or there i've been trying to sneak in some bosses uh not on prodigy prodigy <laughs> prodigy could definitely use some raids but i don't know if i can sneak prodigy in a raid anywhere but uh yeah so i haven't been doing too much raiding however i do have a three uh, mythic plus box on four of my five characters unfortunately the beautiful female panda prodigy is not one of them so we'll slowly gear this guy up we do have the two-piece tier bonus we have the chest and i think the gloves and uh we're hoping for another tier piece would be cool because that way we can use our creation catalyst to get our fourth piece and this will be the last character that does not have a full tier set that we want our druid doesn't have one but i think you may only want to use the two-piece in mythic plus anyway but anyway let's get on with it Oh, Prodigy still only has one 262 Lego. Don't worry. We'll we'll get back to Prodigy someday, just after all of our other characters. Let's see what we got here. Oh, no. Dude, what is with Prodigy and having terrible trinkets for the whole expansion? I think I'm going to take this just for the sheer, like, massive item level upgrade it is. But, man, this is not a very good trinket to have. Holy smokes. I mean, this is a, it's a 40 item level upgrade, so I mean, uh, and I don't even have another on you, so I'm actually going to keybind this somewhere. I've recently done this thing where I've hidden my, there we go, I've hidden my skill bars to make my UI look a bit more clean, but sometimes I struggle finding things when I need to change them. All right, well, we got some item level upgrades, which hopefully can help us sneak into some more keys. Let's move on to our druid. And again, we have... So I believe I have a three mythic plus box on every other guy. And then I don't know if I have any raid boxes. I think I snuck in a few heroic bosses here or there. I've been trying to farm the trinket from the sausage on like pretty much every character. <laughs> I don't think I've gotten it on any of them except my paladin, which was traded to me lucky enough. But yeah, so I don't know what our box is. Our druid is slowly coming up. Our druid's slowly coming up. The nice thing about our druid is that we have all of our valor saved up. We haven't used any of it. So if we do have some good items that we want to upgrade, if we did feel the need to upgrade our stuff, I mean, we have some good pieces. We have a 278 weapon and offhand wrists and cape and helm with a socket and our two Legos. So I guess we're really looking in this category right here. We need a ring or a uh, trinket would be real nice for us. I should be checking my loot spec more often. I believe I looked at all of them before I uh, went to bed last night, but you never know. All right, let's see what we got here. Come on, give me a changeling. No. Okay, so we have we have a 278 chest. So let's look at this. This is a no take. Uh, we already have one of these. This would be an upgrade technically, but I don't think this is the one that I want. Um, it's not a bad neck. However, this is going to be a 278 tier chest, and we can get that upgrade. I think we even passed on a tier chest last week, and now we have uh, reunited with this chest, and we'll be able to tierify this and get a nice 16 item level upgrade. So not too bad on our druid. We won't be looking too ratty. We will take this chest. We'll put it down here. We're not going to go tierify it right now, but not bad. Would have liked would have liked a trinket or something a little bit more rare, but all right, we're saving those for our other guys. Now on to fragility. I got a really nice ring on fragility. I think fragility's been slowly rising. Fragility had a pretty good week, if I remember. So let's see what items we've gotten on him. So last week I got this ring from Necrotic Rip, Necrotic Wake with Leech, which is really, really nice. Um, earlier we got this this trinket. I think this was last week. And we also got a weapon. So it's it's coming up. We still have a few we still have a few items from last patch, but we're approaching 270 item level. So right now we're looking for 
I hmm, there's nothing that we really super need. Uh, I would like, I think tear pants because I think we don't want these gloves. I think we want to use different gloves and we want to use tear pants. So tear pants would be nice. A new wrist. There's nothing super necessary that we don't have though. So let's just uh, rip it open and see what we got. Pretty hard to get tear pants from dungeons though. Oh, oh, I'm in prot loot spec. I just, oh my dude. I just said I need to check my loot specs and then I forgot about it. I was playing with Junkrat's tank last night and we were trying to get tank stuff. Oh, what a tragedy. All right, let's, let's see though. Um, okay, well, first of all, very beans that we got this trinket. We're not happy about this. We already have this chest. However, this helm will be a 278 tier helm. So, I think we're happy with this. I think we'll just take this helm. It'll be a nice item level upgrade. Close to what we'd, you know, what we'd expect anyway. We'll grab this. And again, we will, um... Put this down here so we remember to tierify it later so a nice item level upgrade from for fragility not complaining too much what are, isn't this ring nice pretty happy about that find nab that from a necrotic wake one of my weekly keys all right two more guys to go these guys are going to be hard to get upgrades for because now their gear is starting to get kind of good and i don't have any mythic raid boxes Normally my mains, like my really geared guys, have mythic raid boxes, so I have at least more of a shot, but decent chance we start ending up uh, taking tokens and getting some sockets. See what we got. Check our loot spec. I think I may have done two, so I may have a small chance at getting into sausage trinket here. Let's look at what do we want on this guy. We need valor. Honestly, I have a lot of good items like this that I want to upgrade with Valor, this that I want to upgrade with Valor, um, a cape eventually that I'll get. So really what we want is, I guess, trinket? No, because we just, we're just going to get the Dissausage trinket, so we don't care about that. We don't really care about rings so much. A night, I mean, a, a ring right here would be nice, a slightly better one. Um, jeez, yeah, there's not too much we can get here. Some gloves to upgrade our tier. All right, let's just let's just open and see what we got. A cape, honestly, might be our biggest upgrade, or some tertiaries. We really need some avoidance. Our priest needs some avoidance. We'd be dying. Okay, what do we got here? So we got a 278 helm. This is not. This is nothing. We have a 278 pants which is also pretty much nothing. I think you use unity pants on pretty much every build as priest. And 278 shoulders, which unfortunately is nothing. Um, yeah, that's quite unfortunate. So I think we're taking tokens on our priest. We foreshadowed this a little bit. Would have been nice to like get one of these with avoidance or something, like the helm or the shoulders, so we can make avoidance tier, but it's like we're grabbing tokens. And we do want to remember to spend these because I think we might be uh, pushing this week, at least I hope. Should be a good week to get some IO on our priest. All right, one more gotta go. We jumping on our shaman. I think our priest gear is a little bit better than our shaman. A little bit more room to get gear up, guy. I don't know if I have a raid box on this guy. We are looking for we could use a weapon real bad i'm being i'm holding out on my valor i don't want to upgrade this just because i know i'm going to replace it but could really use a weapon we need the disausage trinket our rings are pretty not spectacular um let's see we have a couple yeah so there's some there's some item level upgrades a lot of our tier is 272 dang this is really junky all right there's some there's some stuff we can get here see what we got and okay oh wow so there's bracers oh 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the ring last because I'm going to hope the ring has like leech or avoidance or something. What do we got? So this is a slight stat upgrade on gloves. Um, Nothing for the chest. Donkey wrists on uh, dang it. Unfortunately, nothing too spectacular. What's my current ring? So, I mean, this is a, it's a, it's a six item level upgrade. The question is, do I want a really haste heavy ring on shaman? I kind of feel like you don't want this ring on shaman, but I don't know what else I would take. This kind of beans. Let's look at my tier situation real quick. So I have pants. So I'm not using tier gloves. What are the tier gloves? Do I want to make tier gloves? Loot. Item sets. Hands. No, these are heavy mastery. So we don't want to make tier gloves. So our options are... I, I don't think we even consider this, even though it's like maybe a small upgrade. We just don't really care about it right now. We don't consider this because, I mean, it's nothing. So the question is, do we get these gloves to get a slight like damage upgrade to get some more haste and crit? Or do we get this, which is a six item level upgrade? Oh, oh I don't know. Both of these are like such small side grades that none of them are particularly compelling. Like, I feel like this ring is going to be replaced inevitably. Are these gloves going to be replaced? Let's look at the end of the raid. Are there good male gloves anywhere? There's good wrists. Lords of Dread. Ooh, so there is Lords of Dread gloves too. So both, all right, so l let's be honest, okay? Both of these items are slight upgrades, but they're also not bis. And therefore, I don't really care too much about what I take. I think it's probably gonna be a while. Uh, how, much, how much does this give me? Three? This gives me 10 stats. This isn't bad. I think I just take the ring. I think we just take the ring for now. It does give me 10 extra stats, plus a little bit of extra stamina as well. Maybe maybe that was an easier option than uh, we might have thought. But I was, I was thinking about it at least. Okay, let's put a verse enchant. Damn. Okay, so we're slightly more geared up. There we go, there's our boxes. Yeah, so this, if you do use a haste verse ring, I feel like this is the one you want just because it's more verse heavy. I feel like my haste is a little bit too high. I think like low 20s is where you want to shoot for. I think, it's hard to say. Haste feels really good, but the problem is so much of your damage comes from Vesper Totem. Well, this, this is a raid fight, but so much of your damage comes from Vesper Totem that you don't necessarily, like haste doesn't help your Vesper at all. So it kind of feels bad have lots of haste all right so let's look at the weekly quest and we'll look at the affixes real quick emissary of war all right so it's the mythic dungeon quest make sure you grab this on every one of your characters this is an opportunity for a 265 heroic item this is definitely the best quest and on top of that i believe this is a very very good week this is tyrannical bursting volcanic cryptid so this is probably the best tyrannical week or one of the best uh the only real affix is that i mean tyrannical is obviously something you have to worry about um the potential of wiping on a boss however the only affix you're really thinking about that much in dungeons is bursting and i don't think bursting is too particularly tough especially now that everyone's super uh super juiced up so maybe in in this instead of talking about bursting in dungeons since i've probably talked about that several times this uh this season already i'll talk a little bit about like how i would recommend healing bursting on different healers because i think with all the tier sets and all the tools that healers have i think all the healers are pretty well suited for healing bursting 
So, one thing that Shaman has now is the four-piece tier, and specifically the ability to chain heal when you drop a totem. So you basically have an instant cast chain heal. This means that if you're worried about bursting and in an emergency, you don't have to hard cast anything. You can just drop one of your mana tide or healing tide totems or your cloud burst totem. So generally speaking, when I'm doing dungeons, I sort of like use these liberally to just send them and get them on cooldown. But on a bursting week, you may decide to hold these just because it's like a free chain heal, uh, whatever you need. And you see I'm running high tide. I've been trying it out a little bit. I don't really have any definitive answer about how to, how it, like if it's good or compared to ascendance. I think ascendance is still very, very good. But maybe if you're like, you know, messing around, like using chain heals like this, trying to stay alive from bursting, you might want to try high tide. But yeah, so basically use your tier set as a shaman. Also, if you like, don't forget to press your cloud burst too. You don't really press cloud burst, like recall it very often, but here's the thing is like if it's the end of the pull and the bursting is going off and you don't really care that you know what i mean like you don't really care that you have a cloud burst rolling and it's also not on the global so you can be you can be like using a spell or whatever that i guess chain heal wasn't a good example but you can recall your cloud burst while you're like in between casts if that makes sense so that's a like recall cloud burst as well as pressing any totems that give you a chain heal are really really strong um i'm not going to talk too much about priest Priest is actually like pretty straightforward. You just try and mask the spell as much as possible. Also, like make sure you stay alive because priest can be kind of squishy. Paladin, I think, might be the most challenging. However, it's still not too bad. The best thing I would say is try and save a charge of your Vanquisher's Hammer if you're playing Necrolord. If you're playing Kyrian, I think Divine Toll is going to be really strong. Like you can basically just plan to Divine Toll every difficult bursting and it should come close to full healing your party. If you're playing Necrolord, honestly, Vanquisher's Hammer with the two-piece proc and just using the charge of it pretty much full heals your party if you have uh, Beacon of Faith. You can even move the beacon off of your tank sometimes this week because it is, it is tyrannical, so the trash shouldn't hurt too, too bad. If you feel like you have a pretty confident tank, you can just move the beacon off the tank. And so an example might be like, Let's say you have one DPS that's really good at removing bursting, right? Maybe it's a Windwalker with Diffuse, or maybe it's a Rogue with Cloak, right? You kind of ignore them, and then the other two guys you put the beacon on, and then you just manage your own life with dispelling yourself, bubble if, if it's an emergency, potions and stuff like that, right? And then every time you blast healing, it'll just completely blast all your DPS. And so the most important thing about bursting is just keeping yourself alive because worst case scenario, if there's like a mega nasty bursting pack and your whole team blows up, well, you can just res, like it's kind of whatever, you know? But if you die, that's when you end up wasting a lot of time, especially if like, Either A, you have to waste a battle res because you don't have a res class, or B, you die and another person dies, so like they have to single res you, then you have to res them, like then you're getting mana, and it's just like, so make sure that you stay alive, which is, uh, Paladin is pretty good at that, right? You have Devo, you have Bubble, you have DP, which you should be able to use on every bursting. You can dispel yourself every time. Like, don't get caught in the trap of like dispelling the tank. Like, the bursting doesn't really do anything to the tank, right? It's really tempting to try and, like, dispel the tank or dispel other people, but just dispel yourself as a pally. Just make sure you stay alive. And... Druid, I would say... Druid is okay with bursting because you can pre-hot. Like, not many healers have the ability to just, like, load up a ton of healing... So as soon as you see, like, let's say you see a bursting is coming soon, you already want to be putting rejuves on everybody. And so like one thing that's really good is just like have rejuve out on every single person. Then as the bursting hits, you drop that, um, you drop F flow, like you might need to reposition it. You can swift mend like one target if there's particularly lower, that's going to give you the soul of the forest charge. Then you can use a wild growth. That's going to give a boosted wild growth to everybody. And then if it's a really, really nasty bursting, that's when you might want to use a cooldown like uh, flourish or trank just to like power through it if you like know well okay let's not say a nasty bursting let's say a long bursting like generally speaking if it's just like all the mobs die and it's clean it's not too bad but like if you can sometimes you have to sort of pay attention to the mobs and see like okay there's 
we already have four stacks and there's four more mobs and all of them have different health like this could get ugly and you have to sort of like already be realizing like okay this is going to get ugly so i'm going to pre-hot and just like trank already at four stacks and then as those more stacks are rolling in you just have like a ton more healing coming whereas like you don't want to be in the situation where it's eight stacks and you're like totally burnt and you're like trying you're like oh no trank just to try and keep everyone alive because trank is kind of like a, a slow burner if you will like you want to have all those hots up and it's just gonna like you know it, it gives you healing throughout the whole eight seconds and miss weaver i mean let's be honest nobody plays miss weaver but miss weaver is actually particularly good with bursting because you have revival so although you don't use it very often um with Ur, you get it a little bit back. You can also use the Conduit. That reduces the cooldown on your Revival. And you can end up using Revival, like, pretty often. At least for most of the really, really difficult Bursting packs. You know, you just have to know, like, okay, there's a difficult pack coming up with Bursting. I'm just going to save my Revival and hold on to it. Also, you have Diffuse for yourself. So, again, like, sort of what I mentioned. You have, Let's say you have somebody on your team that is good at removing Bursting. Whether it's, like, you know, a Rogue with Cloak or something like that, right? Well, you can Diffuse yourself. Then you can Dispel another person. So then you have three of the four people. Because you don't really care as much about the tank. You have three of the four people taken care of then you just have to make sure you're pumping heals into that fourth person whether it's uh you know just spamming vivify can use life cocoon or whatever so a lot of it again i want to stress that part about selecting who is in danger and like don't be afraid to just single target heal bursting like it's tempting to be like oh essence font like oh light of dawn but if you're trying to aoe heal bursting the problem is your efficiency goes out the window when you're not thinking about like okay well the tank's never gonna die so any healing that you do to the tank doesn't really matter and then if a rogue cloaks okay well now you're only healing three people and generally speaking in mythic plus like most of the aoe buttons aren't worth pressing if it's only three people like chain heal and um healing rain essence font like light of dawn like all those buttons you don't want to press on only three people you usually just want to try and single target but I guess that uh, that went on a little bit longer, but hopefully any healers that are still watching that are interested in healing bursting, trying to get some big IO this week, hopefully it helped out a little bit. I appreciate you guys. I'm probably going to be trying to stream a decent amount of keys. This is a pretty fun week to play, and I've been enjoying doing Mythic Plus. So thanks for watching, and happy keying, friends.